The Siyata Deshmai, we're going to learn Beit Daf Yud Gimel. We're going to start nine lines from the bottom of Daf Yud Base, Omud Base. And the point that's important for the coming sugya is one line in the Mishnah we saw earlier on on Daf Yud Base, Omud Base. We saw in the Mishnah that Beishamai claimed that Truma, and the discussion in the Mishnah was can you compare the Truma to the other Matonis, the Zoraya Lechoyayim, the Keva, to the Chala. But either way, Beis Shammai mentioned that regarding Truma, then one is never allowed to be mafresh Truma on, on Yom Tov, and there's never a need to be mafresh Truma. In contrast to Chala, where if the Torah allows you to bake Chala, the Torah must allow you to be mafresh, to separate the Chala. If the Torah allows you to shecht an animal, the Torah must allow you to separate the Zeroya Lechoyayim and the Keva. The matnis kuna, but what brings anything, what brings produce, fruits to the stage of being required to take truma, is it's got to come to its final stage of its production, called the goyron. And what brings it to the final stage is you've brought it in from the fields, you've thrashed it, and you've piled up. After the thrashing, you've made the pile, you've smoothed the pile. That is called the kri is the pile, the miruach is smoothing the pile, and then, the, then according to the Torah, you're chayev to take truma. But that process, that finishing of the, the finalizing of the production of the, the produce is not something that you can do on Yom Tov. And therefore, there's never a necessity or there's no reason to allow a person to ever have to take truma on Yom Tov. And indeed, you're not allowed to take truma on Yom Tov. And in that context, Let's start the Gemara. Last word of the line, Ushbezichne de Rava, the landlord, the host, where Rava was staying, de Rava bar Ravchonon, Havale Asuraisa de Chardela. He had a bundle of mustard. And, and lots of things need trumas and maestros. Whatever grows, you need to take trumas and maestros. We're not going now into the details. The concept of goyer on the thrashing floor obviously applies to grains, to wheat, to barley. But there's a concept of goyer on, which is the final preparation of any type, every type of fruit, any type of vegetable, whatever context it is, has its own stage that's called the final stage of the production of that particular whatever the fruit of the vegetable, the grain. And that final stage is what's mechaivit with truma. So here we have a, somebody who had a bundle of mustard, Omer Le, and he asked him, and this was not a question now, or, or, let, let's see, Omer Le, mahu lifruche umeichal minayhu biyomtev. The question is, are you allowed to be poireach, which means are you allowed to crumble up the these the, the mustard the mustard comes the the seed itself comes in in some some type of a pod are you allowed to crumble up the pod in order to release this seed on yom tov do we say you're preparing food it's like shechita it's like bishul which is allowed or do we say no you could have prepared it before yom tov shechita you can't always do before yom tov bishul you can't always do on yom tov but to be able to separate the mustard from the pod in which it grows you could have done that before yom tov and if you could do it before yom tov you're not allowed to do it on yom tov it's included in the melecha of disha disha is threshing it's a tilde of disha so that was the question lehava biyodi he didn't know, he didn't have the answer. That means Rabbi Barbar Khan didn't know what to tell his landlord, whether it was Muta or not. Also, he to Rava. He came to Rava and asked him the same question. Omar Le Rava gave a short and concise ruling. Melilois, which are typically the ears of grain, which are slightly softer, and the way to separate the grain from the chaff which is covering them and from the stalks, is by rubbing them. You rub the grains together and that breaks away the inside from, from the coating. That's called moililin melilois. You rub the ears of grain. Mefarchin kitnyois. Regarding kitnyois, it's a little bit different. It's called mefarchin, which is you have to crumble up because the coating, the hobs of the, the pods, rather, of, these, of the kitnyois, which is types of beans, and that family of growth of the beans, of the kitnyos, there 
it takes in order to separate the bean or whatever's inside it from the pod, you need a mefarachin, you need to crumble it, you're allowed to do that b'yomtev. So Rav said it was muta. As abaya, esve abaya, hamoylil melilois. The haloch is that somebody who is who's rubbing the ears of grains, me'er of Shabbos, that means from air of Shabbos he already separated, the, he already rubbed together these ears of grains, and now they're already not attached. That means the ears, the grains themselves have come out away from the chaff, but it's still all mixed together. We know that regularly there would be a winnowing process where you separate the, 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 the grain itself from the chaff. So Lamachar, the next day, and this is talking about on Shabbos. On Shabbos, you're not allowed to be moilil melilois. You're not allowed to separate the ears of grain from the chaff on Shabbos by, by rubbing them. But if they've already been separated, the question is, am I allowed to now um, separate them, means sort out, so to speak, to blow away the chaff and leave me with the clean, pure grains? That's called menapeach, the loch is you're allowed to fan or to throw miyad liyad. It means not to do it in a way that you regularly do on during the weekday. That would be osa. However, and we're talking about on Shabbos, you're allowed to do it in an unusual way, which is miyad liyad. You can just you can pour or you can take the these melilois, this whole mixture of grain and chaff, and take it from hand to hand, and that way they'll somehow the chaff will fall away and the grains will be left, and you're allowed to do that on Shabbos. V'oichel, and you can eat it. Avoloi bekino, and you're not allowed to use any tool for it. You cannot use a funnel, v'oloi betamchoi. You're not even allowed to use a large plate. They would spread out this whole mixture on a large plate, tilt it slightly, and the more heavier grains will roll down to the bottom of the plate, to one side of the plate, and that's how they would separate it. That's awesome. That was the first part of this b'risa. The second part, Somebody who rubbed the ears of grains from before Yom Tov, and now on Yom Tov you're, you don't need to separate the grains from the chaff as in the coating, but it's all in one big mixture. You have to do a type of a winnowing here. So Lamachar on Yom Tov, then you're allowed to fan, the, which is something which is more than you're allowed to do on it's more than you're allowed to do on Shabbos. You're allowed to fan and throw away and separate the chaff from the, from the grains, al yad al yad, providing that you're doing it just a little bit at a time. If you do a lot at a time, it looks like you're preparing for after Yom Tov. That's Asa. But if you do a little bit at a time, you're allowed to. Al yad al yad, just a little bit v'oichel. V'afilu bekinon, you can even use a funnel. V'afilu betamcho, you can even use a large plate. Avaloi betavlo. But not to use a board, which is a very large, a board, a large area, which typically you would only winnow or you would separate the chaff from the seeds in a much larger quantity. That's asa, v'leiba napa, nor can you use a fine sieve, v'leiba kavara, or a coarse seed. That's what it says in the b'risa. But what do we see in the b'risa? The b'risa speaks about hamoylil melilois me'er of Shabbos, and it speaks about hamoylil melilois me'er of Yom Tov. Why doesn't it speak about Hamoilil Melilois on Yom Tov? Did Rava just not say a minute ago, Moilin Melilois Umafrachin Kitneis be Yom Tov? Here you have a Brysa that speaks about Moilin Melilois on Air of Yom Tov. That if you broke away, if you rubbed away the, the, the grains from the chaff, then on Yom Tov you're allowed to separate and winnow the two. But to actually break away the grains from the chaff, it seems you're not allowed to do that on Yom Tov, and that's contrary to Rava. Me'er of Yom Tov in, on Er of Yom Tov you're allowed to be Meidel Melilois be Yom Tov loy. Answers the Gemara, no. Afilu Teima be Yom Tov. It could be as far as Yom Tov is concerned, you're allowed to. It's Eichel Nefesh. I need to eat it, you're allowed to do it. So why does the Brysa speak about that if you are Meidel Melilois on Er of Yom Tov, you're allowed to be Menapeach, you can blow away the chaffs on Yom Tov, why doesn't it speak about being Meidel Melilois on Yom Tov? No. I do the Tano Reisham, the Er of Shabbos, since the beginning of the Brysa has to speak about Er of Shabbos, because on Shabbos itself, you're clearly not allowed to be Meidel Melilois. 
Therefore, Tana Sefer Nami, just to keep the uniformity of the Braisa, the Braisa speaks that on Yom Tov also, you did the Moilin Melilois, Me'er of Yom Tov. But of course, you're allowed to be Moilin Melilois even on Yom Tov. Asks the Gemara, Imkain, Motzinu Truma Shazakai Baramasa. And this is why the Gemara brought this here. Once you see that on Yom Tov, as Rava said, you're allowed to be Moilin Melilois which means you're allowed to take these grains that are the grains in the ears in the chaff and you're allowed to on that means at that point it's clearly nowhere near the final stage of its production of its making it ready of what we call goiron is nowhere near goiron yet you, you have to th- normally goiron means a regular goiron as you thrash it and and you make a pile so at this stage it's definitely not high with truma on Yom Tov, you rather say, I'm allowed to be moilin in Melilois. I can then prepare these ears of grain, break them away, break the grains away from the chaff, and then separate the chaff from the grains. And now it's ready. And since this is, and since this is what you're doing on Yom Tov, it's now chayiv in Truma, because now it's the final stage of its production. Moilin Melilois. So how can you say now, mission at the top of your base, on your base, that on Yom Tov, there's never a concept of having to take Truma. I've got a case where you can actually prepare something to become Chayev. You can finalize, you can finish the process of preparing the grains on Yom Tov. In which case, now that it's prepared, you have to take Truma. So if you're allowed to be Moilin Melilis on Yom Tov, can we not take it for granted that you're allowed to be Mafresh Truma? How can the Mishnah say that there's no concept of being Mafresh Truma on Yom Tov? Imkain Motzinu, Truma, Shezakai Baramah. So you have permission to take the Truma. Utnan loyim omaritim betruma. Sheinu Zakai Baramah of Achulu. Did we not see in our Mishnah that in contrast to the Matonois and to the Chala regarding Truma, you never take Truma on Yom Tov? Answers the Gemara, Loy Kashia. It's not a question. Everybody agrees to what Rava says, that Moililin Melilois, that you're allowed to prepare these ears of grain to be eaten on Yom Tov. And you're allowed to even prepare them on Yom Tov. So how can the Mishnah say there's no Truma? says, yes, because since most people, them is these ears of grains, what does everybody else do with them? Everybody else, you take them to the thrashing floor, you bring them in, you thrash them, you pile them, you smooth the pile, and that's, that's the Goyron. So you're being Moilil Melilois, it's not considered a Goyron, you haven't, it is not an official final stage of production, it's just like a temporary type of snack. We know that if something is just ready to be snacked, it's not yet the, the, the goiron, then you can keep snacking on it. And you don't need to take the truma before, whilst you're snacking. Once it's ready and, and it's at the stage of goiron, then it's tevil. At that point, you have, you're not even allowed to snack. But over here, that we're going to see that our mission obviously holds that even though you're in melilois, it's not doesn't receive the status of goiron. It receives the status or it keeps the status of achilas arai, and his mutter. Horebi, Horebi, I see Barabi Yehuda. The Tanya, we learned in the Braisa. Hichnis shibolim laasais men isa. If you brought in from the field the ears of grain with the intentions of making a dough with them, which means that you're going to thrash them and you're going to make it into flour and make a dough with them, then the halach is, as we just said, oichl mehen arai. All the while that you haven't thrashed it, piled it, and smoothed it, you're allowed to snack from from these ears of grain. Upotter, these potter from Trumas and Maestris. If, however, you didn't bring them in in order to thrash them and prepare them for to make a dough, but if you brought them in in order to just rub them one by one and eat them, and that was your intentions of bringing them in, so Rebbe holds, Rebbe is Mechaev. Rebbe says that just virtue of bringing them in and you're not planning to thrash them, you're planning to take these kernels one by one, break them out, break the seeds, break the kernels out of the, the chaff and eat it. So that means you're not, there's no process after bringing it in. So just bringing it into the home, that is the, sta- that is the status of Geiron. And therefore, you want to eat it. You have to, t- Rebbe says, you're Mechaev, you have to take Trumas and Maestras first. Rebbe Yesi Rebbe Poiter. Rebbe Yesi Rebbe says, no. He says that the concept of, of the Goncho, is the goiron, and that's the concept of that, is making a pile. And since you're not intending to make a pile, and you're only being moilil melilois, you're taking them one by one, you're not piling up all the seeds, you're taking one 
take one ear of grain at a time, breaking it away and eating it, that's not considered goyron, it's not considered the goncha, and therefore it is it is potter, and there's no chiyav of trumas and maestras. And therefore, even though we can hold like Rava that moililin melilo is on yamtiv, it's not a contradiction to what it says in the Mishnah that there's no truma that you, you never have to take truma on yamtiv. Asks the Gemara, Ula Rabbi Yosi ber Rabbi Yehuda, even the court of Rabbi Yosi ber Rabbi Yehuda, that says that when you bring in the it is of grain in all with the intentions of just rubbing them one by one not with the intentions of making them into a dough that's not called the goncha it's not called a final making it into a grain it's not considered a goiron if so then there's there's no chiyuv of truma but the Gemara is saying i'll find you a case where even according to rabbi yisib rabbi you will be chayev for or take trumas even though it's moilil in melilois. Then the question will come back. Then even according to Rabbi Yisib Rabbi Yehuda, there's there's truma. There's a possibility of being mechay of truma on The question will come back. In our Mishnah, it makes a blanket statement that there's never a requirement or a need to have to take truma consequent to something you are allowed to do on yomtiv. Kagoin. What's the case? When you brought the ears of grain from the field, you brought them in, you brought it in with the intentions of making it into, into a dough, which means you intended to thrash them normally, which means that the very coming into the home is a coming in which is going to ultimately bring this tua to the point of the final stage of its production and a chiyuv of truma. Just it happens to be that all the while you haven't thrashed, piled and smoothed, you're not yet chayev. But at least bringing it into the house was a stage which, in and of its own, in this case, because of your intentions of making it into a dough, it was already a stage that was going to bring to a chiv of truma. Vanimlach, and then you changed your mind and you decided, I'm not going to make these grains into, into a dough, into flour. I'm just going to I'm going to just break them up one day one by one and nash on them and eat them one by one these raw grains the tivlo then as soon as he's decided and committed himself not to make it into a dough at that point on I don't need the thrashing anymore the thrashing is no longer a condition to be high of it to become to be considered goiron to be considered the goncha and therefore since when he brought it into the house, he brought it in with that intention of making it into Dogon, if so, then as soon as he decides not to do that, he's straight away going to be Chayev with Truma. And if he's Moililon and he breaks them up and he wants to nash on them, he's not allowed to eat them before taking Truma. And so, if, if so, you've got this case, which is mutar on yomtiv. You're allowed to be moilin melilo, as we saw before. And as long as when you brought it in, you brought it in with the intentions of, of turning it into regular dogon by threshing it in order to make flour and, and to make it into a dough. If you changed your mind from that point on, even if you're moilin melilo, you have to take trumas. Then the question comes back that if so, we have a case where consequent to something you were allowed to do on Yom Tov, you chayev truma. How can the Mishnah say you never take truma on Yom Tov? That's how Rashi explains this, and there's lots of complications here which the Mephorosh should discuss, but that is the, how Rashi reads the Gemara. Elomai says the Gemara, Elomai truma, when it says in the Mishnah that there's never truma that's, that needs to be taken on Yom Tov, that couldn't be taken before Yom Tov, raiv truma, it means the majority of cases where something's going to be chayev and truma, it's going to become chayev before Yom Tov, not on Yom Tov. But you're right, there is that minority case, this one particular case that the Gemara just mentioned, either according to Rebbe, any moilin on melilois, or according to Yosi Ber Yehuda, only in this one particular case, if you brought it in with intentions of making it into a dough, and then you changed your mind, in those cases only, there's a concept of truma, and either way, we have no proof one way or another here, because we, it, it could well be talking about according to Rebbe, we're talking about any moilon melilois, according to Yosi Ber Yehuda, as we explained. Continues the Gemara, Omar Abaya. We just now saw Machlekes. 
A machlekes, if somebody is, wants to be moilulin melilos. We mentioned that the regular, typical stage of preparing anything that grows to be to its final stage of production, where it will be chayiv minatayra of chumais, is called the goncha. It's called when it comes to the goyron, which is that it's thrashed, it's fully prepared in bulk, the bulk is piled up and smoothed, then you're chayiv. And we mentioned that moililin melilo is when you're not planning to do it in bulk, you're planning just to break up a little bit the few grains and eat them. Is that considered the final production in Ischayev or not? We saw that was a Machleikas Rebbe and Rebbeisi Berbiuda. Omar Abaya, Abaya says Machleikas, this whole Machleikas Rebbe and Rebbeisi Berbiuda is only by Shibolin, by ears of grain. The regular grains where most people, what do they do with the grains? Indeed, they they thrash them, pile them, and smooth them. And therefore we can understand, Rabbi Yisib Rabbi will say that if you want to do use it, you're the minority, and you want to take these ears of grain and be moililon, that doesn't mean it's come to its final stage of production, and therefore there's no chiv of truma. Avol bekitniyos. However, regarding kitniyos, where there's many people that don't prepare them all in bulk, crush them all in bulk to remove the kidneys, the beans, from the pods and make a pile out of them. Rather, people just take a little bit and, and just use a little bit as a, in their dishes. And therefore, it's common that this is the goyron, this is the final stage of the production of kidneys. And therefore, Abaya says, in that case, we don't need the bulk. And Divre Hakril, according to everybody, is Sarisa. Just just bundling them together. If you have a bundle of of these kidneys, that's already the final stage of production. That's it. Tavla, and therefore it's Tevel, and you have to take trumas. You're not allowed to eat at all from them unless you've taken trumas and maestras. That was the first version of Abaya. And now the Gemara is going to try and bring a proof to Abaya from a Mishnah in Maseches Trumois. Let's bring a proof from a Mishnah. A Tilson is a type of a kidneyus, and they would put a very little bit of it into the dish. And it's talking about one specific type of kidneyus called Tilson. We'll soon see why. But if somebody had a bundle of kidneyus called Tilson, Shel Tevel, it was Tevel. So this is already our proof, by the way, that you have a bundle of this. It's been bundled. It hasn't been piled and it hasn't been smoothed. It hasn't been done on bulk. It's just a small bundle. How small is called a bundle is discussed elsewhere. But you have a bundle of Tilson of Tevel. Then what do you have to do? Hareze Koisesh. And we're going to discuss the details of this later. But he has to pound this Tilson. Do Disha. He has to thrash it. Umachashiv and make a general estim- estimation. How much seeds there are here, how much food, fruit there is. Umafrish al azera, and you should be mafrish the trumas according to the percentages that he has to take trumas and maishas from the fruit part of this tilson. And he doesn't take, doesn't have to take trumas and maishas on the, on the stalks of the tilson. And we'll see later what this means, but we're going to see it's because the, unlike most other plants and things that grow, that the fruit and the stalks don't have the same taste and don't have the similar type of use, or they don't, they don't have the same flavor. When it comes to the tilson, the stalks have the same flavor as the, the kidney, as the tilson itself. And I may have thought you have to take trum, it's also considered somewhat edible, and you have to take trumus and maestros on the stalks as well. So for that, the Mishnah says, no, ve'enu mafrish ala'itz. The question is, why are we talking here about, why are we talking about Tilson? Why doesn't it speak about the Shibolim? Say that if you have a chavila, if you have a bundle of ears of grain, of regular grains, that it's already, it's Tevel. And tell us what to do with the Tevel. Why are you only talking about Tilson, only about Kitnius? So the Gemara says, La, my love, can we not assume that it's Rabbi Yisi Berbiudahi? It's talking about Rabbi Yisi Berbiudah, where, as we saw before, and this is what we saw from Abaya, that by according to Rabbi Yisi Berbiudah, if Hichnis Shibolim, if you take regular grain, ears of grain, and Lemoilon Bemelilo, is to make them into 
just in order to rub them and to eat them one by one, not to thrash them together. Rabbi Yisib Rabbi Yudha says it's butter. Indeed, since everybody thrashes it, or most people thrash it, the fact that you're choosing to be on but melilais is not called a goyron, it's not called a goncha, and therefore you're potter. So this mission is coming to impress on us that Rabbi Yisib Rabbi Yudha, it's only by the Shibolim where he says that. But when it comes to kitniyos, even Rabbi Yisi Berbiud, and this is the proof to Abaya, that when we spoke about Chavile Tilson Shel Tevel, this is even according to Rabbi Yisi Berbiud, because according to Rabbi, the Mishnah wouldn't be speaking here about Tilson, it would be speaking about even Shibolim. So it must be that even according to Rabbi Yisi Berbiud, who says that by Shibolim, that you're bringing in with the intentions of Moilin Melilois, is Potur, it's not considered the end of its production, regarding Tilson, which is Kitnius, it is, and therefore it's Chayev with Truma, and that's why it's called Tevel, and the Brishna tells us what to do with it. Koitesh, Mechashiv, Kamazera, etc. My love, Rabbi Yisib, Rabbi Yudahi, Omar, Hosom, Loitiv, who he holds that by Shibolim, that it's not considered Tevel, because everybody else, or most people, they, the final stage of the production of the Shibolim is by Disha, Kri, and Miruach, thrashing, piling, and smoothing. But he agrees in the case of kidneys, where many people don't do it on bulk, and then many people, they just prepare a little bit of the kidneys as you need it for your cooking, and therefore it's considered final much earlier, but even if you don't do it on bulk, and it's tevel. And this is the proof to Abayah. Says the Gemara, there's no proof. Rebbe, it could be that, that this Mishnah is actually following Rebbe. That Rebbe, the same Rebbe that said that Moililin Melilois is Chayev by Shibolim, also says it by Kitnius. But the Gemara said, I don't understand. If so, I Rebbe, he, my area Tilson. Why are you talking about that Tilson is considered Tevel? I feel a Shibolim Nami. You, Rebbe, said that even regular Shibolim, the regular ears of grain, when you bring them in for Moililin Melilois, it's Chayev with Trumas and Maestras. I feel a Shibolim Nami. Says the Gemara, eh, you're right. That's a very strong question. Elomai, you've got no choice. You have to say that this Mishnah is Rabbi Yisib Rabbi Indeed, you want to say it's Rabbi Yisib Rabbi And you want to say it's proof to Abaya, the Abaya who said that even those who say that by Moililin Melilo, it's by Shibolim, your potter, which is Rabbi Yisib Rabbi by the kidneys will be Chayev. Okay, but if so, we have a question. Le'ishmi'inon Shar Kitnius, the Kolshke in Tilson. Why does the Mishnah tell us that Tilson is considered Tevel? Why don't you tell us about the other Kitnius? Other Kitnius, even more people are used to, not as many as Shibolim, but even more people are used to threshing and threshing, piling and smoothing with other Kitnius than with Tilson. And therefore, there would be even more reason to say that by the Kitnius, you should by Moililin Melilois, it should be more reason to say that it's not Chayev with Trumas and Maestros. And then the Mishnah should tell us, even Shar Kitniyos, even those other Kitniyos, it is not enough people are used to threshing, piling and smoothing to say that that's a condition to be considered the final stage of production and Chayev of Trumas and Maestros. No. Why does the Mishnah not tell us that even Shar Kitniyos is already Chayev when it's Moilin Melio. It's for Kolchke in Tilson. And, and, and we'll take it for granted that Tilson, which even less people thresh, pile, and smooth, that even there he'll be Chayev when he's Moilin Melio. Says the Gemara, I'll answer that. Elo, Tilson, it's Shrikhele. And the truth is, what the Gemara is doing here is saying, no, I'm going to refute the proof to Abaya. And I'm going to say this Mishnah is Rebbe. No reason to say it's Reb, that it's Rabbi Yesi Berb Yehuda. We asked a question. If it's Rebbe, who says he's Chayev by Moilin Melilo, it's even by Shibolim, why is the Mishnah talking about Tilson? Talk about Shibolim. Elo says the Gemara Tilson, it's Shichel, it's a special Chiddush the Mishnah wanted to impress on us that this Chiddush only applies to Tilson. So could I to Chamina, I may have thought. Hoil Vatam Eitzayu Piri Shava, since the flavor of the stalks is the same as the flavor of the fruit itself, the seed itself. Glifresh Namia Eitzoy, that you should have to take Trumas and Maestras to, on the stalks as well. Kumash Manon, that's all the mission is coming to tell us. That Misha Hoile Chavile Tilson Shel Tevel, what do you do? Etc. Koisei Shumachashev, Umafresh Alazera, Vaina Mafresh Alaitz. 
And since we want to impress on us this detail of Eino Mafri Shalaitz, obviously we can only be speaking about Tilson and not anything else. And this Mishnah could be Rebbe. If this Mishnah could be Rebbe, you have no proof to Abaya. Because all Abaya was saying was that the Rabbi Yisi Rabbi Yehuda, who says that Moilin Melilo is by Shibolim is Potur, by Kitnis will be Chayev. But that's only a proof if the Mishnah is Rabbi Yisi Rabbi Yehuda. Now that we say the Mishnah could be Rebbe, we don't have any proof to that. And that was the first version of Abaya. Ikad Omer, another version, Omar Abaya, Machlekes Beshibolim. The whole Machlekes, as this is in this aspect, it's the same as Abaya. That the Machlekes Rebbe and Rabbi Yisi Rabbi Yehuda, both versions of Abaya is that the Machlekes is by Shibolim. And we know that with the Bryce at the top of the Omud, Hichnes Shibolim, Lasis Men Isa, then if it's etc. Um Lamoilon Bemililis, Rebbe Machai, Rabbi Yisi Rabbi Yudam Poiter. So we know the Machlekes is by Shibolim. The question is that since that Bryce is only talking about Shibolim, we assume that Kitnius is different. So in the first version of Abaya, we said that by Kitnius, everybody says, that you don't need to have the goyron, it's enough to have moilin melilois, to be chayev. Tivri hakil, asurais, or tavla, it's enough just to bundle them. In this version, it's the opposite. Avul kitnius, tivri hakil, asurais, loy tavla. In this version, the Gemara actually assumes that more people, they thrash, pile, and smooth the kitnius than shibolim. And therefore, even Rebbe, who says that by Shibolim, Lemoilin Bemelilois is Chayev, he's going to agree that by Kitnius, that unless you do a proper Disha, a thrashing, piling, and smoothing, it's not considered Tevel. Loitavlo. So if you just bundle them, if you just take a bundle of these Kitnius and they haven't been thrashed, piled, and smoothed, there's no Chiyuv of Truma, even according to Rebbe. And now we're going to ask a question, Maestro. We're going to ask a contradiction to this version of Abaya from the Mishnah. The same Mishnah we saw before. He should pound the grains, or Machashiv, and estimate Kamazera Yeshbuen, or Mafrish Alazera, but in a Mafrish Alaitz. So, what do we see from this Mishnah? We see clearly that Chavile Tilson, even bundles of Tilson, which clearly have not been thrashed, piled, and smoothed, nonetheless they're called Tevel. And if they're called Tevel, did you abide not, and Tilson is Kitnius, did you abide in this version not say that Kitnius, everybody agrees that it's not, that Lemoilin Bemelilois, that if, unless you do a proper piling and smoothing, then it's not Chayv Truma and Maishra. So how can you say it's Tevel if it's just a bundle of Tilson? Says the Gemara. But this question is only a question against Abaya, only if you assume that this is a regular Tevel, which means that we're talking about that the Tilson is in the Rashus of the of a regular Yisrael. And what stage of the production of these Tilson do we say that they are considered Goiron, they're considered Dogon, it's considered as final and therefore is Chayev Truma. But that's only if it's by the Yisrael, if it's by the original owner. My love, Tevel, when we speak here about the Tilson Shel Tevel, is Tavel Shel Truma. It's talking about the regular Tevel, which is Chayev, the regular Truma, Gedoyla, which is the, when the person has the produce, the first truma, which minatera, any amount, the Rabbanon said you should give approximately 2%, but the, the, this truma is the owner who grew this produce has to give 2% approximately to the koyin. And then after that, he gives 10% of what's left, which is 9.8% of everything to the levy. Of that, the levy gives 10% to the koyin, it's called truma smeiser, etc. That's the Trumas and Maestras. So this Mishnah is probably talking about Tevel, the regular Tevel. And you see clearly here from the Mishnah that even though the Tilson, which is Kitnius, it's just been bundled up, it hasn't been piled and smoothed. Nonetheless, it's called Tevel. This directly contradicts what Abaya said in the second version that by Kitnius, Divri Hakil, Asuraisa, Loi Tavla, that just bundling them doesn't make it Tevel. Says the Gemara, no. This Mishnah is talking about Tevel. It says Tevel. It says a Chavile Tilson shall Tevel. But you know what? There's a different type of Tevel. It's possible to have a type of a produce where in and of its own, which means in and of its stage of production, it's not yet at the stage where it's called Dugoncho. It's not the stage of being Chayev, Chumas, and Maestras. But there's something you can do and almost force it to become Chayev and Chumas and Maestras. And that is the Tevel the Mishnah is talking about. 
people. In which case, it's nothing to do with what Abaya was talking about. When Abaya was talking about the natural process of, of, of producing this kidney ice, whether if it's just in a bundle, whether it's enough to become tevil, where the Abaya says it doesn't become tevil, unless you force it. That's not what Abaya was talking about. So in what case? How can you force something to become tevel even if it's not been totally finalized, totally finished? Yes, there is a case. Loi, it's not talking about regular tevel, it's talking about tevel, tivul, shel trumas maisa. As we mentioned, there's two types of truma. They have many halachas that are similar. There's the original truma, which is, which minatayra, any small amount, a single wheat of a whole, a whole pile is enough to be yotza the your minimum requirement of truma, of truma gedoyla it's called, which the owner has to give to a kohen. That's the first truma. Then the kohen gives to a levi, he gives maisa, and then of that we'll call maisa rishon, of that maisa rishon, the levi has, to, and the maisa rishon has to be 10% of what's left after truma gedoyla. So if this person did what he should have, midrabonon, and took away 2% to the kohen for truma gedoyla, he left with 98%, give 9.8% to the Levi, Maisa Rishin. The Levi has to take 10%, exactly 10% of that 9.8% and give it to the Kohen. It's also called Truma. It's not called Truma Gedoyla, it's called Truma Smaisa. So now what, normally, and, and it's a Chiyuv Minat you have to go in the right stages. First you give the Kohen, it's called Rishis to Goncha, the very first Truma has to be Truma Gedoyla. And then the Levi gets his Maisa Rishin, and then the Levi takes on the Maisa Rishin, he takes the Trumas Maisa. What happens if a Levi comes before the Kohen and takes his 10% of Maisa Shaini, but not from the 98%? That means the owner hadn't yet given the 2% to the Kohen. He's taking his 10% Maisa Rishon from the whole pile, which means that the Levi took 10% of the pile, not 9.8%. He took the now as Maisa. He says, I'm a Levi, you're going to give me 10% Maisa. Give it to me now, even before you've given it to the Kohen. This person could say, I'm not yet chayev to take trumas and maestras, because you're not chayev yet. But the levy says, well, what do you care? You give it to me anyway, it'll work, it's valid. So this person, this levy came and took the maestra By virtue of the fact that the levy took maestra, then by now he's, by default, he's, so to speak, switched on the whole system of trumas and maestras on this pile. So even if this pile is not yet piled up, or for whatever reason, it's not yet finished. We'll soon see the exact details. But if the Levi came before the Koyin, at that point, then whether the Levi has to give the Truma Gedoyla, which the Koyin lost because he came too early to the Koyin, is a different discussion. But his Truma Smaisa, he could say, I'm, 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 I'm not yet chayev to take Truma Smaisa, because it hasn't yet reached the stage of production where it's high with Trumas Maisa. It hasn't been thrashed and, and piled and smoothed. No. For that, that's the halacha, that as soon as the Levi takes Maisa, ah, you're starting the, the process of the tithing of the Maisas, you're now high with Trumas Maisa. So if so, the Levi forced the status and the Chiyuv of Trumas Maisa onto the produce even before it was finalized. And therefore, that's what this mission is talking about. If you have Chavile Tilson Shel Tevel, not that it would have become Tevel yet. No, because Abayah said by Kitniois, since he didn't pile them and he thrashed them, pile them and smooth them, it's not Tevel. The Levi forced the title of Tevel onto it by taking Maisa Rishon. Regarding the Trumas Maisa, he's now Chayev to take Trumas Maisa. Loi, Tevel Tovel Shel Trumas Maisa, Okudur Bavau Amersha. Omer Bshim ben Lokish. The Omer Bavo, Omer Bshim ben Lokish. Maisa Rishon Sheik Dimoy Bashibolin. If the Levi came and took his Maisa Rishon whilst it was still in the stalks, it hadn't even been thrashed, never mind piled and smoothed. Shmoy, the name that you've given it, Maisa Rishon made it Toivloi, made it Tevel le Trumas Maisa. You have to take Trumas Maisa even though it's still in the stalks, something which doesn't normally exist. And that's what the Mishnah is talking about. So now the Gemara is saying, If we were, if according to the way we understood that Mishnah before, that we're talking about the regular Tevel, and we're talking about the opinions that say that even if it wasn't thrashed, piled, and, and smoothed, it was just to be used, it was just bundled together, it is Tevel, regular Tevel for Trumagdala and everything else. 
then I can understand why you should have to crush the tilson, and namely to prepare it and make it final and ready to be used before giving it to the Koyin. Because we learn that out from a Pasuk that one should give, when one gives the Trumas, one should give it in its finalized state. But now that we're talking here about that it's not yet finalized, the Levi took it the Tvua when the Tvua was still in its, in its, in its um, ears of grain, it was Shibonim still. So why does the Levi have to crush it and prepare it to make it into flour or at least to thrash it and prepare it? Why can't he give it to the Kohen as it is? He got his Maisa Rishon in this state, give it the Trumas Maisa in that state also. Why can't the Levi say to the Kohen, in the same way as I was given this Maisa Rishon in its Shibolim state, I'm going to give it to you in the same state, to you the Kohen. Why does he have to be Kohesh? Why does he have to crush them? Oh my Rava, Rava says, you're right, but Knossa, it's a penalty. Because you weren't supposed to take your Maiserishan before the owner gave Truma Gedola. The Pasuk says that the Truma Gedola has to be given first. It's Reishas de Goncha. You took the Truma Gedola, you took the Maiserishan before the Truma Gedola, you have a price to pay. Prepare it as if it would have been prepared had you taken it on time. Tanya Namihachi, a brisa to this effect, Ben Levi, a Levi Shenosnu Lo Shibolim Bemaisroisov, that who was given the Shibolim, the, these grains which were still before the threshing, was given to him as Maisa, Maisa Rishon, Oisa Oison Goiron. He has to make that into a produce, he has to make, prepare it and finalize it before giving the Chumas Maisa to the Kohen. And of him, if he received grapes, Oiso oiso nyain, squeeze them into wine. Zeisim, if he was given olives, oiso oiso shemen, squeeze them into oil. Umafre shalem, trumas maisa, and then take from the wine and the oil, take trumas maisa, 10%, and give to the coin. Venoistam le coin. Shekashem shek truma gedoilo, in the same way as truma gedoilo, which is that first initial truma which the owners have to give to the coin. Einu ini teles elo menagoyron, umenayekev. It's learned from Psukim in the same way as the Truma Gedoyle is only given once it's ready and it's been, the, it's been processed, which is from the Goyer on the threshing floor, from the Yekev, the wine press. Kach Truma Smeisa, so too Truma Smeisa, Eino Niteles Elo Mina Goyeren Umina Yekev. And it's, it's a knas, the Gemara calls it a, a penalty because he took it too early. So the Gemara says, but I have another issue. So you learn that Bryson, that Mishnah you learned, in the second version of Abayi, we were forced to learn that way, that we're talking about not the Tevel, the original Tevel, where the whole produce is chayev in Trumas and Maishas because you've brought it to the final stage of, of production. No, you're talking about Trumas Maisa that is only chayev because the Levi took uh, the Maisa. If so, we have an issue with the Mechashiv. Mechashiv means to estimate. I don't understand. If you're talking about the original Truma, where Minatayra, the original Truma, can be one, one wheat, and then we can understand. So, if you're talking about Truma Gedela, estimate how much is approximately and, and give it to the Kayin. But if you say we're talking about Truma Smaisa, Truma Smaisa has to be 10% of the Maisa Rishon. So, you can't just estimate. You have to know exactly how much Maisa Rishon you've got and take an exact 10% and give to the Kayin. Why are we talking about estimation if we're not talking about the regular Tevel of Truma Gedela? Answers the Gemara Homani Abba Elozo ben Gimel. This is the, the opinion that Mishnah is following the opinion of Abba Elozo ben Gimel. The Tanya, we learned in the Braise Abba Elozo ben Gimel Oimer, and he learns it from a Posok. The Posok says, Venechshav Lochem Trumaschem Kadogon Mina Goiren Uchamleo Minha Yokev. So it says that Venechshav, Venechshav, you should estimate who is this Lochem, you the Levim. You Levim should estimate Trumaschem, the Trumas that you the Levim are giving. Trumaschem is two Trumas. Bishtei Trumas, a cause of Madaber, two Trumas. Achas Truma Gedoilo, Vachas Trumas Maisa. Not only Truma Gedoilo you can estimate, but also the Trumas Maisa is also just an estimation. Kashem Shet Truma Gedoilo, Niteles Boimid, Ubemachshava. In the same way, as Truma Gedoyla can be done by estimation, Ubamachshava, meaning you can take it mentally, you can just think and say, I'm, you, you, I'm, you can't wait till the end to take your Truma, but you can, in your mind, mentally set aside and say, that corner on the, the far 
left corner, that corner is going to be truma, then that's sufficient. You can eat the rest. And at the end, you'll just separate what you'd, in your mind, separate it. So too, kach trumas maisa niteles ba'imid umab machshava. So too, trumas maisa, the 10% of maisa rishon that the Levi gives to the Kayan also can be done, number one, ba'imid with estimation, which is what we're talking about here, and also b'machshava, you can take it in your mind, you don't have to actually separate it before starting to eat from the rest. Continues the Gemara, Gufa Omar Bavo Omar Bshim ben Lokish, maisa rishon sheik dimay b'shibolim, if a Levi took his 10%, in the stages before it became Tevel, and the state when it was still in the ears of grain and the Shibolim, Shmoi, the name Maisa, Toivloi makes it Tevel, the Tumas Maisa, as we saw before. Maitama, what's the source of Marova? Hoil Vyotza Olof Shem Maisa. Since it received the title of Maisa, it's now considered, it's considered already tithable, it's already in the parish of Truma, and therefore is Chayev with Tumas Maisa. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rishlokish. Maisa Rishon Sheik Dimoy Bashibolim. If this Levi came and took his Maisa Rishon, the 10% of the produce, before the owners gave the 2%, or the, the Midrabon on the 2% of Truma Gedoyla to the Koyen, does the Levi have to reimburse the Koyen besides for giving 10% to the Koyen from the Maisa Rishon? He has to give also to the Koyen that little bit that the owners should have and would have given to the Kayin had the Levi not taken it. Because the owner, let's say, is deciding to give 2%. If he would give 2% before the Levi comes, he would take 2% of everything. But if the Levi takes his 10% first, you're only left with 90% of the produce. And now the, the owners are going to give to the Kayin of Truma Gedela, 2% of the 90%, not of the 100%. Does the Levi have to reimburse that to the Koyin says of Shimon ben Lokish, Potul me Truma Gedoyla. There's a special posuk, the Levi is exempt of Truma Gedoyla. Shunemar, it says in the posuk, speaking to the Levim, Ve'el Halavim, to Dabir, Vomar, to Alem, Ki sikhum eis b'nei Yisroel es ha-maiser asher nosat yilochem me'itom, b'nachalaschem v'harei moisem mimenu Trumas Hashem, Maiser mina Maiser. When you get your Maiser Rishon, take Maiser mina Maiser. You should take Maiser mina Maiser called Trumas Maiser. And how Rabbi Lozab and Gimel is going to understand Maiser mina Maiser if he says that you can take an estimation, the Possuk says explicitly Trumas Maiser has to be 10%. So that's discussed by the Rishonim. And they say that according to Rabbi Lozab and Gimel, Maiser mina Maiser is a mitzvah. But Meikar Adin, you can just take less, you can just estimate. But either way, what's the Gemara learning out from this Pasuk? What's the Shlokish learning? From the Pasuk that says, Vare Moisem, that the Levim have to take Mimenu Truma Sashem Maiser Mena Maiser, that Maiser Mena Maiser, Marti Lechot, that the Levi only has to take from his Maiser Rishon that he received from the owners, from that he has to take 10% Truma Maiser, Veloi Truma Gedoyla. But it's explicit that he does not need to give to the Kayin the Truma Gedoyla, which the Kayin lost because the original owner is left only with 9%, with 90% instead of the 100% when giving the Truma Gedoyla. V'loi Truma Gedoyla v'trumas Maiser mina Maiser. You only take Maiser mina Maiser, Trumas Maiser, you don't take the Truma Gedoyla. Omelir Papa Labaya. So for Pastor Bayer, if you've got an explicit posuk that says that when the Levi takes his Maiserishin before the Kohen got his Truma Gedela, the Levi only needs to take Truma's Maiser, not Truma Gedela, Ihachi, Afiluik Dimoy Bekrinami. What happens if the owners had already thrashed and piled and smoothed, and now Minatoira it's Tevel, and now the Levi comes and takes his 10%? Maiser Rishon. Over there, also, you're going to say to the Levi that you don't need to reimburse the Kohen and give him what he was missing. We know that not to be true. So, our Pop is asking Abaya that if you have a posuk that the Levi never takes from the Maiser Rishon more than Trumas Maiser, is that going to be true? Not only when the Levi takes his Maiser Rishon when the grains are still in its Shibboyle state, it's still in the ears of grain, but even once it's been thrashed and piled, would that is also going to be true? Omerle. So Rav Papa, Sabaya said to Rav Papa, Olech Omakro, because of you we have a special posok to avoid your claim. The posok says, Mikol mat noiseichem to the Levim, Mikol mat noiseichem from all the gifts, the matonis that you're getting, to rimu is kol trumas Hashem, take all the trumas, Mikol chelboi es migdoshoi 
as Mikdash Eimimenu. So it says in the Pasuk that the Levi has to take all the Trumas. What is that? So that is, means take Truma, take um, Trumas Maisa and also take Truma Gedela. So now we have an issue. We have two seemingly contradicting Pasuks. In one Pasuk it says, Varemoise Mimenu Trumas Hashem Maisa Mena Maisa. The Levi only has to take Trumas Maisa, not Maisa, not Truma Gedela. In the next pasuk it says, Torim was called Trumas Hashem. Not only do you have to, you Levi have to take Trumas Maisa, you also have to take Truma Gedela. So Omaro Isa, what made you say that one pasuk is the first pasuk is talking about when you took the Maisa Rishon when the grain was still in its Shiboyle state, and the second pasuk is talking about when you took the Maisa Rishon in the Kri state when it was already piled? Says the Gemara, it's logic. Hai Idgon v'hai Loi Idgon. Once it's already been piled and smoothed, it's already called dogon. It's already called a finished grain. And therefore, it's already minatayra, the truma gadoila now is due to the kohen. Because now it's tevel, now it's chayev. So if you take your maizarisha now, then the Tvasuk tells us you're going to have to reimburse the kohen with the truma gadoila. However, in the case when it was still shibailis, the minatayra, it's not yet tevel. And therefore, the, the, when the Levi took the Maisa Rishain, it wasn't yet due to the Kohen, the Truma Gedela, and therefore the Pasuk says, you Levi do not need to reimburse the Kohen. Continues the Gemara. Tanan Hasam. We learned in a Mishnah in Masechah's Maisras. Hamikalef Sa'irim. If somebody is peeling the, the body, he's peeling away the chaff from the kernels of the body. Then Mekalef Achas Achas V'Oichel. And this is in Hilchas Maisras, that if you peel kernel by kernel and eat them, you're potter from Maisa. It's not considered in any way as, as a final stage of production. It's not Tevel, and therefore it's just called a snack. All the while it's not Tevel, you're allowed to snack on them and you can eat them. If, however, you didn't eat one kernel at a time as you peeled it, you just peeled a few and stored them in your hand. In that case, once you already have a whole bunch of these weak, of the barley kernels in your hand, it's already considered a final stage of a production. It's already tevel and chayev. He's chayev to take um, to take maestras. He's not allowed to eat them just out like a snack. That's what it says in the Mishnah. Omer Abelazo. Rabbi Loza commented on this Mishnah. We'll soon see it's not clear whether Rabbi Loza is actually talking about this part of the Mishnah, but the Gemara assumes at this point Rabbi Loza is commenting on what we just learned now. That he said, V'chein l'shabbos. So to the same way as you're allowed to peel one kernel at a time in order, and then and eat it, on Shabbos also, if, you're, if you have these kernels of wheat, you're allowed to peel them one at a time, it's not considered mefarik, which is a tolda of dosh, of thrashing. It's because it's so unusual, such an unusual way of thrashing, that, or mefarik, it's such an unusual way of doing it, that you're peeling one kernel at a time, that it's not considered, it's not considered a malacha on Shabbos. However, if you collect them in your hand, that's already a more normal way of doing it. And if you're going to collect them in your hand, and you're not going to eat them one by one, that's already considered a tolda, a sub category, so to speak, of Disha, of thrashing, and is Chayev, and is going to be Chayev. So according to this, Rabbi Loza is saying that in the same way as one by one is not Chayev in Maestras, it's also not considered Dosh or Mefarik, and is not Chayev on Shabbos. Asks the Gemara Eini, is that true? V'horav mekalfolei debisu kasi kasi. We see explicitly that and this is we're really talking about Shabbos. We see explicitly that Rav, that his wife of Rav, he was, she would prepare cups of these peeled barley grains, and he, she would prepare them on Shabbos. Rabchia mekalfule de bisu. Rabchia's wife would prepare kase kase cups of these barley kernels, and you see that on Shabbos it was muta. So in this part of the Mishnah, what's going to turn out is that what that if you have a whole handful of these kernels regarding Maisa is considered a Gemara Malocha. It's considered a finalization and you chayev with Maisa. Regarding Shabbos, it's not considered that you're doing something normal and final. It's very strange and unusual. And therefore, on Shabbos, it's muta. So we have an issue. What did Rebbe Loza say? V'chein Shabbos. What's V'chein Shabbos? We thought it means that on Shabbos, you're allowed to 
you're allowed to peel them one by one, but you're not allowed to peel them in, in fistfuls or in cupfuls, we, we know that's not true from Rabkhiyah and Rav. Keep reading the Mishnah. Rabbi Lanzo was talking about this Mishnah, but we stopped at the wrong place. Let's see what the Mishnah says next. If somebody he was, was, a break, was rubbing these ears of grains of wheat, and, and now he's allowed to just bit by bit, he's allowed to blow away He's allowed to fan away the chaff from the grains, and he's allowed to eat them. And there's no chiyuv of ma'isa yet. However, if once you fan them away, you then put these kernels into, collect them into your into your lap, and you you keep them together. It's a type of a a um, a whole a whole bunch of these wheat kernels. Then chayev. Then he's going to be chayev ma'isa. Then it'll be chayv. Omer Rebeloza, and this is what Rebeloza said, v'chein Shabbos. The same applies to Shabbos. If you have these melilois, moilil melilois from before Shabbos, and now you want to fan away the, the chaff, which is a type of a boira, a type of a separation, and you want to do that on Shabbos, you're only allowed to do it with, there's a number of conditions of boira, but you're only allowed to do it just a minimal amount that you need right now. But if you're going to start collecting them in your lap and having a whole pile of them, then this boira is going to be osur, and you're not allowed to do that. And that's what Rabbi Lazar said, v'chein l'shabbos, and that we understand that. Continues the Gemara. Maski floor of Abba bar Mamel. Abba bar Mamel asked the following question. Let's go back to the beginning of that Mishnah that we just saw from Maisrus, where if you're peeling one kernel of barley at a time and eating it one by one, then that's okay. It's not a normal way of doing it, and you're allowed to eat it on without taking maisa. However, if you peel a whole bunch and, and pile them up in your hand and collect them in your hand, then it's already considered a type of a goiron, a type of a dagoncha, and you have to take maisa. And we saw that that's only regarding maisa. Regarding Shabbos, even if you have a cup full of them, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to collect them, and it's not considered it's con- a, a tolda of Disha. It's not considered thrashing. So Rabbi Bamamal is asking, Varesha, in that beginning of the Mishnah, Lemaiser in, can it be that when you have a whole collection of these barley kernels in your hand, then as far as Maisa is concerned, it's considered a finalization. It's a normal way of finalizing the production, so to speak, to be high of Maisa. But the Shabbos loy. But for Shabbos, it's not considered a normal way of doing it, and it's not considered a melacha. Umiyika midi, is there anything delineating Shabbos, loyavagmar melacha? Is there anything that regarding Shabbos is not considered a melacha? Will a maisa have a gemar melacha? But regarding maisa, to finalize that now it's chayav in maisa, that it is a melacha? Can that be? Says the Gemara, Maskif Lor of Sheshus Braid Ravidi, of Sheshus Braid Ravidi is going to refute this assumption of Rab Abba Bar Mamu. Veloi? Is it so strange to you? I'll show you an explicit example where something is a gemara melacha for Maisa and not for Shabbos. V'hagornon lemaisa. What do we need for Maisa? The status of goyren, which often goyren means, in the case of, of the produce of the grains, what goyren means, it means that you thrash and you pile and you smooth. We can understand that's, a, that's involving melachas on Shabbos. But there's a, there are other types. Not everything is thrashed. You don't thrash vegetables and, and fruits and other things. So certain, there's certain stages of goyron for some items which doesn't involve a melacha of Shabbos. But it is the finalization of the production regarding maisus. Well, goyron le maisa. The concept of goyron only applies to maisa and doesn't always involve a melacha of Shabbos. That none we learned in the Mishnah. And again, this is in Mesechus Maestros. Ezu garonon lemaisa. What's considered goyron for maestros? Hakishuin vadluin. These two vegetables called kishuin and diluin. Misha yeposku. That as soon as the blossoms have fallen off them, that's already considered a goyron for maestros. At that point, it's already finished and you chayev maestros. V'shelo yeposku. But in the event that the blossoms have not yet fallen off, but misha yamid. Or more, if you heap them into a pile, that's also considered making the, the end of the goyron. 
And that's one example of Tnan Nami we learned in another Mishnah, Gabi B'Tzolim, regarding onions, Mishnah Maishras, Mishayam Mid Orma. As soon as you heap it into a pile, that's the Goyron. That's when you're chayiv with Trumas and Maishras. Ve'ilu in Gabba Shabbos, regarding Shabbos, Hamodas Orma, if you have these Kishuin and Deluim, you've brought them into your house, and on Shabbos you're going to pile them up. There's a malocha with that. Is then you've done anything wrong? Potter is going to be Potter. Elomai, how are you going to explain that? Mai is the You have to say that the concept of malocha of Shabbos and the concept of malocha of Maisa is different. Maisa, malocha is determined by what's the final point of the production, of the finalization of preparing this to be used. And on Shabbos, there's a different category. It's called Meleches Machsheves Ostra Torah. The Torah only prohibited the Lamates Melochas, which are calculated labor, which is typically a type of a labor that needs some, some form of professionalism, some form of thought, and it has to be worked out. And that's, that's a condition to be Chayiv on Shabbos. Making a pile could clearly be a it could clearly be the stage of Gemara Malacha for Maisa, but making a pile of fruits on Shabbos is not a Malacha. Malachas Machsheves, also Torah. So Hachanam is so to hear with these kernels of barley, Malachas Machsheves, also Torah, in the beginning of the Mishnah. It's true that if you pile up these barley kernels in your hand, then regarding Maisa, it's considered a type of a Goyron and Yochai of Maisus. But as far as Shabbos is concerned, it's no, and there's no Malechus Machsheves. What are you doing? Just because you're piling up some of this produce in your hand, that doesn't make it into a Malacha to be Chayiv on Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. Kate said, Moilil, we saw before in Dafyud Beis, Samad Beis, that one's allowed to be Moilil Melilois on Yom Tov. What is Moilil? We said that if you rub the kernels and separate the seed itself, the kernel itself, from the chaff. How do you do this Te- technically? Abayim Mishmeder of Yosef Omar, Choda Achoda. One finger against another finger. You rub the kernel between two fingers only. Rav Avya Mishmeder of Yosef Omar, Choda Atarata. You can rub your thumb against two fingers whilst rubbing the kernel. Rav Omar, Kivin de Mishani, Afilu Choda Akulhunami. Rav says that since you're doing it in such a strange way, you're separating the chaff from the kernel itself in such a strange way, there's no issue here of uvdu de choyl, and therefore you can even be moilil melilois with your whole hand. It means put, you can put, you can use all the fingers at the, um, when, when doing this. Continues the Gemara. Ketzad menapeach, we saw that regarding Shabbos, we are not allowed to be moilil melilois, but if you have them that you've already broken up the chaff from the the kernels, but the chaff and the kernels are all mixed together. You now want to do a type of a winnowing, but it has to be mutar on Shabbos. It's not allowed to be a melocha on Shabbos. So we said it's got to be miyad liyad. You do it in a very unusual way, just from one hand to the next. You, you transfer this mixture, and in the process, the chaff will fall away. Omar of Ada, so Ketzad menapeach, Omar of Ada Ava Omar Av, menapeach, Mikishri et Boisov Ulamailo. You're only allowed to put these, the, this mixture from your knuckles and on, but not into the palm. It has to be very, it's got to be very an unusual way of doing it, and therefore it cannot be in the palm. And the Gemara says that Mochachu Alob Marovin out of Sol, they laughed at this. And given the Mashani, since you're doing it in an unusual way, you're doing it by hand, where you're just you're fanning it by putting it from one hand to the next, or you're fanning it with a hand. However, we understand this menapeach, you're doing it in such an unusual way. Kivan de Mashani, Afila Bakula Nami, even with your whole hand, you can do the fanning. What he actually meant was, you're even allowed to fan with your whole hand. And it seems to mean that if you have the mixture in one hand, you can blow over it with the other hand, even with using all your force. And it's mutter to do that on Shabbos. And in the next year, we're going to continue the next Mishnah.